Welcome to your vinyasa practice. We are going to start out today just heading right into a downward facing dog. And I want you to remember that if downward facing dog, especially first off in your practice, is too much on the wrists, please set your knees down, come into a tabletop, reset the grip on your hands, and then when you feel ready, return to your down dog. So don't feel like you have to hold it um, in perpetuity. <laughs> But if it feels appropriate, head to your mat, find your down dog. Remembering these points of contact, especially with the hands, because we don't spend a lot of time putting all of this weight on our hands, it's important to really get the palms flat so that you can use the whole circumference of the hand to push the floor away. Now, I'm kind of lifting my head up a little bit because I'm trying to speak to you, I'm trying to speak into the microphone, but for your practice for your body can you relax your head your ears between your biceps it's like you're reaching the crown of the head down towards the mat and as you're pressing the floor away the chest is moving back towards the thighs and the heels are settling down towards the mat and just take a few moments here to feel your body in this shape Let's take about three deep breaths to just find stillness. Feel your body in this shape. You might inhale through the nose and maybe exhale through the mouth if you like. And then start to add some movement to your down dog if you haven't already. So maybe it's moving the hip side to side. You can bend the knees right and left. Head can move, yes, no. Take one more breath here in your down dog. And then let's shift forward and find a high plank. We'll just briefly lengthen out into high plank, start to move the hip points down, and start to press the floor away and feel that slight round through the upper back. You're looking down at your mat, so the back of the neck is nice and long. Inner thighs are engaged. Quadriceps are moving away from the knees. Take one more breath here. And then let's set the knees down. Ooh, and we'll warm up the wrist or stretch out the wrist a little bit, especially after that down dog hold. So you can start to walk the fingertips back towards the knees or out towards the sides, whatever your range of motion in your wrists are. And then maybe add a little bit of movement back and forth. I like to let my heels, the heels of my hands, peel away from the mat and then press them back towards the mat. It might be that your hands don't get all the way flat and that's okay too. <clears throat> now we'll start to turn the fingertips so they point forward and we'll get the backs of the wrists. So either one hand at a time or both hands together, start to put the backs of the hands onto the mat or towards the mat. So the palm of the hand is facing up towards the armpits. Fingertips are pointing towards the knees. And if you want to, you can add that rock again the back of the hand towards the wrist joint can peel away from the mat and then press back down. That feels good. If you're doing one hand at a time and you haven't switched out to the second side, please go ahead and do that. Let's just take two more breaths here. And then we'll bring those hands back to the mat. Actually, let's just take a moment to sit back on the heels, roll out the wrist, let a little blood flow after all that pressure, move through the hands and the wrist. You can roll them out, you can shake them out, you can do both. All right, we'll come back to tabletop when you're ready. And now we're gonna leave our left knee on the mat and extend the right leg back, curl the right toes under, give yourself a little pump forward, backward. So the right leg is straight, but the ball mound of that right foot's pressing down into the mat and you're just shifting weight forward and backward. Keep that right hip pointing down towards the mat and float the right foot off the ground a few inches. 
So try to stay neutral in the spine. Everything's pointing down towards the mat. Extend your left arm straight forward. Bicep alongside the ear, deep breath in, press the floor away with that right hand and the top of the left foot. And then your exhale, left elbow to right knee. You can kind of dome the upper back towards the ceiling, crunch in, maybe the elbow and knee tap. Inhale, extend. Exhale, around, maybe tap. Inhale, extend. We're gonna keep this right leg extending back behind us. Replant the left palm. Okay, so both hands are on the mat. Now this right foot's gonna sweep beyond the left foot and press down, so you're at an angle here. So right foot, again, it's grounded, but it's just crossed outside of the left leg. Yes? Now, a little bit of balance here. We're gonna take that left arm straight forward, just like we did in our balance, and then we'll take the left elbow, pull it back, and kinda of, kind of look over that left shoulder. Okay, so this might feel awkward and wobbly, and that's okay. Left arm, stretch it right straight forward, and then left elbow, pull it back. Look over your left shoulder. So you're rooting to your right foot, your right hand, your left knee. One more time, pull that elbow back, squeeze. Left palm plants, right knee back into its place. Now either moving the hips back towards child's pose, or if you want your second round of down dog, we're gonna take three breaths. Deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale. One more time. Now we'll find a high plank. You can do high plank with the support of your knees. You can always set those knees down, still extending shoulders forward over the wrist and hugging the navel into the spine. Press the floor away. Slight round through the upper back. Deep breath in, get long from the crown of the head through the heel bones. And now let's exhale, set the knees to the mat. <clears throat> we'll extend the left leg straight back, curl the toes under, press down through the ball mound of that left foot. Right knee stays in its place. Start to pump forward and backward so both hands are still on the mat. You're just shifting the weight forward and backward. Now, you're gonna pause here, float the left foot off of the mat, keeping the left hip pointing towards the mat. Extend the right arm forward, bicep alongside the ear. Deep breath in here, this is where you get really nice and long through the body. And then the exhale, you round forward, dome the upper back, right elbow, maybe it taps that left knee. Inhale, extend, get long. Exhale, round. Inhale, extend. Exhale, round. And one more time to inhale, extend. Right hand plants, left leg stays extended. You're gonna sweep that left leg across and behind the right foot. Curl those left toes under, ball mound of the left foot is planted. It might be beyond the yoga mat, mine is. Now, here comes that little awkward bit where you're reaching your right hand forward, just like you were doing and you're gonna pull your right elbow back, look over your right shoulder, okay? So remember, you might feel wobbly. This is probably gonna feel awkward. Can you embrace that? Right arm stretches forward, right elbow pulls back. You might look back. Inhale, extend through that right arm. Exhale, kind of crunching the right side body, right elbow towards the right hip. One more time, find that extension. And then exhale, right hand plants, left knee to the mat. Your choice, it could be down dog, it could be child's pose. We'll take again those three breath cycles. Maybe the mouth opens and you sigh out the air. All right, so if you are in child's pose like I am, we'll come forward, tabletop, and then meet up in downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, we'll inhale, extend that right leg up and back. 
point those right toes towards the ceiling and then bend your right knee. Can you squeeze your right heel towards your right glute? And then start to open that right hip so it's pointing towards the ceiling, keeping the chest squaring forward and down. Deep breath in. Re-extend the right leg. The right hip points towards the mat. Shift forward, right knee hugs into the chest. Plant that foot between your hands. So you're framing out your right foot with your hands. I like to pop up onto my fingertips in the absence of blocks. But if you do have yoga blocks at home or if you have come accustomed to using something else like books, please feel free to add those props on. All right, so we're in our low lunge. We're going to pump forward, backward a few times. Nice deep bend in that right knee, pressing down through that right heel as you shift the weight forward and backwards. You're going to stay posted and rooted into your left hand. Pause in that shift forward. Lift that right arm high towards the ceiling. So you're turning your belly towards your inner right thigh. Now, just like we did with our hands and our knees, we're going to pull that right elbow back. You might look over your right shoulder if it feels okay on the neck. And then extend that right arm overhead, bicep alongside the ear. We'll do that a few times. Right elbow pulls back towards the right rib cage. And then extend it forward overhead. One more time, pull the right elbow back. Right elbow extends. And then plant that right palm. Let's step into high plank. Pause in your high plank with or without the knees. Both are good options. Breathing in, get long. Breathing out, shift forward, bend those elbows, come all the way to the belly. Tuck the chin in, rest the forehead on your mat. Press down through the tops of the feet. Relax your shoulders down your back body. Squeeze your elbows close into the sides. Start to press into the hands and the feet. Lift the chest. A little bit of cobra, exhale, release. Inhale, press the floor away, lift the chest. Exhale, release. One more time, baby cobra to medium cobra, inhale, lift, and then exhale, lower. Press your way all the way up and back, find that down dog, three breath cycles. From your down dog, we'll inhale and extend that left leg up and back. Point those left toes just to start, making this nice long straight line from the hip point to the toes. Then bend your left knee, heel bone towards the glute. Give it a little squeeze. Then open the left hip towards the ceiling. Still press down through both hands, pressing the chest towards the mat. So shoulders are squaring forward. Left hip is opening. There's a rotation through the lower body. Deep breath in here. Deep breath out. Re-extend that left leg long. Shifting forward, hug the left knee into the chest. Plant the left foot between the hands. Maybe you come up onto fingertips or using props, start to pump forward and backward. All the while, stay rooted in that left heel bone. Nice deep bend in that left knee. So pause when you're shifting forward into that left foot. Keep that deep bend in the knee. Right knee can stay lifted or it can lower. You're going to stay posted on that right hand or the fingertips. Left arm is going to reach up. Okay, so belly turns towards inner left thigh. Now we're going to pull that left elbow back. Kind of look over that left shoulder. And then extend the left arm overhead. Bicep kind of comes alongside the ear. We're just going to keep, it's kind of like a lawnmower action. That's how I think of this. <laughs> it's like you're really trying hard to start a motor, um, which has a really long, long chain, <laughs> right? So extending the arm and then pulling it back and finding that rotation. One more time. Reach that left arm overhead. Bring that palm to the mat. Step to high plank. Pause there. Breathe in. And then start to lower with or without the knees all the way to the belly. Tuck the chin, rest the forehead. Three rounds of low to medium cobra. Inhale, find that back bend. Exhale, lower, tucking chin. Just take a moment to rest your forehead in between sets. 
Inhale, press the floor away, lift. Exhale, lower. One more time and then option here to press right up into upward facing dog. If it feels okay in your body, your knees are lifted and your quadriceps are active. You're pressing the floor away, your neck is long, your shoulders are down your back. Now you might tuck over the tops of the feet, lifting the hips up for down dog. Or maybe you take a moment to breathe in child's pose. Let's take three breaths here. All right, so if you are in child's pose, let's meet up in down dog. Take a big full breath in. Big full breath out. Lift your heels, bend your knees. Start to gaze forward. Make your way to the top of your mat. Hang out here for a few moments in Uttanasana, your forward fold. Softness in the knees. Start to crawl the fingertips up the shins, lengthen the heart forward, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, refold, Uttanasana. Inhale, pressing through those feet, stretch the arms forward, come all the way to standing, Uttita Hasta in Tadasana, it just means arms are reaching up and overhead when you're standing tall. Exhale, your hands to your heart. Pause here, just reset. Take a moment even to close the eyes. As you're standing tall, relax the shoulders down your back. With your eyes closed, feel all four points of your feet rooting into the mat. You feel a sense of energy pull up through the body and shoot out through the crown of your head. Take one more breath here. All right. So now we will blink the eyes open, take your hands to your waist. Move that weight into your left foot. Engage your left quadricep up away from the knee and start to get really light on those right toes. And we're gonna point those right toes forward and just lift and lower that right leg. I need to scoot back a little bit from my wall. If there's something obstructing you in front of you, move it out of the way or scoot back. So I'm practicing staying really extended through my left leg as I lift my right leg as high as it will go. I'm trying to strengthen hip flexors on the front and use my left glute, a little bit of hamstring, to lift and lower my right leg. Okay, one more time, we're gonna pause here, hold, start to flex those toes towards the face, and then bend that right knee, extend it back behind you, can you land in crescent lunge? So re-bend into that left knee, start to Bend and straighten that right knee, a little bit of a pump action here. We kind of did this when we were shifting forward and backward with our hands down. And then find a nice place to land in your crescent lunge. Reach the arms forward and up. We'll add on a twist here in our crescent lunge. The left arm is gonna sweep back. You're gonna look back over that left shoulder as you reach your right arm forward. So hips are trying to square forward. You're rotating your upper body over towards your left hip. Deep breath in. Now, maybe you stay like this, or maybe you reach your right hand forward and down towards the mat. Soft landing in that twisted lunge. You've been here before. You're gonna pull that left elbow back towards the left hip, and then reach it overhead. One more time, pull that left elbow back, reach it overhead, plant that left palm. Step to high plank, option to move through your flow. So that might be all the way down to the belly, maybe finding a back bend, low cobra or upward dog. Take a beat, pause wherever it serves you to pause. Child's pose, down dog. Always options. Let's take three breaths. All right, so if you're in child's pose, find your way to down dog. In your down dog, lift your heels a little, bend in those knees, start to gaze forward, walk forward, top of the mat, Uttanasana, your fold. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, refold. Start to root through those heel bones, stretch the arms forward, come all the way up to standing, reaching the arms overhead. Exhale your hands to your heart, pause. Close the eyes. Settle. Feel your feet. Right foot, left foot. Feel your shoulders relax, feel everything stack. Linking the eyes open, bring your hands to your waist. Start to feel the weight shift into your right foot. Get light on that left foot and then point those left toes forward. See how straight you can make that right leg. So I really want you to think about engaging quadricep and glute on the standing right leg. Now as you're let on your left foot, point those toes and then just lift and lower that left leg to your range of motion. Maybe the left leg doesn't get parallel to the ground, and that's okay. You're just working on building the strength around the hip flexor and the standing glute, so that right leg glute and hip flexor as well. See if you can stabilize the upper body as you do this. And then the next time you lift that left leg, pause there, flex the toes towards the face, take a moment, breathe. Start to bend that left knee, extend it back behind you, left foot plants, back of the mat, find that crescent lunge. If you need to make any adjustments in the legs so this crescent lunge is nice and stable, we're gonna explore it a little bit like we did on the other side by bending that left knee as well and then straightening it out a little bit. Right knee remains fairly bent. It might kind of shift forward and backward just a little bit, but see if you can keep it relatively close to stacked on top of that ankle joint. And then find that comfortable position for you to rest into your crescent lunge and then sweep the arms overhead. Breathe in, breathe out. Settle into your lower body like it's encased in cement. It's not going anywhere. We're gonna layer on our twist. The right arm's gonna sweep down and back, the chest, the torso moves towards that inner right thigh as the left arm reaches forward. Deep breath in, reach through those fingertips. Either stay here or those left fingertips can start to reach down towards the mat, top of the mat, that hand can plant, and the right arm can reach high. A Couple of times, we're gonna bend that right elbow back towards the rib cage and then extend the arm overhead. One more time, bend the elbow, reach the arm, and then bring that right palm forward and down. Step to your high plank. If you'd like vinyasa, here's the time to take it. Meet up in your down dog or your child's pose. We'll take three breath cycles. If you're in down dog, soften your knees to the mat, find child's pose. Another two breaths to settle, hips to heels, belly to thighs. Now start to bring your hands underneath your shoulders, come forward to tabletop, cross your ankles behind you, and then roll your sits bones back over your feet, Bring your feet forward, find the center of your mat, knees bent, feet planted, roll yourself onto your back body, nice and slow with ease. Arms come down alongside the body, palms face the floor, shrug the shoulders down the back, feet nice and flat and parallel, pressing into your feet, lift your hips up, stretch the arms forward, up, and then overhead. Dynamic bridge, three rounds. Exhale, lower arms and pelvis back to the mat. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, lower. Last time here to lift the hips, reaching the arms overhead. 
Maybe you keep your hips lifted as your arms come back down to their starting position. Walk the shoulders a little bit closer into the spine. Option to interlace the fingers to the webbing underneath the pelvis. If you're taking that interlace, you're pressing down through the pinky edges of the hands. Arms are straight. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. Slowly start to release out of your shape. Back body completely relaxed to the mat. Start to walk your feet wide on your mat and sway the knees side to side. One more time in each direction. Knees move to left and to right. And then we'll begin to gather the knees into the chest, giving ourselves a nice big hug, wrapping the forearms around the tops of the kneecap, or maybe it's the hands. You're just making yourself into a tight little ball, as tight as you can make it. See if you can get a little bit more of your low back and your tailbone pressing into the mat. Deep breath in here. Deep breath out. Keeping the knees bent, let the knees widen out to the sides. Take your arms to the inner parts of the legs. Maybe you hook the big toes or you could take the outer edges of the feet and then move the feet towards the ceiling until the ankles stuck on top of the knees. Find happy baby for a moment. If it's accessible to you, Supta Paschimottanasana, with the legs extended long, soles of the feet still looking at the ceiling, you may be catching hold again of the outer edges of the feet or you're hooking your piece fingers around your big toes. So basically you're in a forward fold on your back. You could also take your hands to the backs of the calves or the backs of the knees, wherever is accessible on your back body. Deep breath in here. Deep breath out. We'll start to extend the legs forward and down, slowly lowering into your Shavasana. Maybe you let your feet separate, let your arms widen, slightly shrug the shoulders down the back, slightly tilt the chin in towards the chest. Settling here for one minute, and then I'll invite you to join me in your seated pranayama, seated breath, to close out our practice. Feel your whole back body heavy. Feel your whole front body soften into the back body. If you would like to join me in our final seated pranayama, you start to add some movement to fingertips and toes. When you're ready, you can make your way up to a seated position with an invitation to keep the eyes closed or the gaze very soft. And as you sit up here, supporting the sits bones, the seat in whichever way is most comfortable and easeful to your spine. Oftentimes that means adding a prop underneath the tailbone. Maybe you'd like to take Gyana Mudra, which is the index finger and thumbs together, palms facing down, sit up nice and tall, feel shoulders stack over the hips, slightly press the chin, actually press the head to the space behind you and the chin slightly tilts towards the chest. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Begin to count your inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold, retain, one, two, three. Draw out your exhale for seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, one. Repeat, inhale, one, two, three, four. Retain, one, two, three. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Try that two more times, counting your breath silently on your own. Let go of any counting, let go of any retention, allow the breath to move through the body naturally on its own. I invite you to join me in closing your practice by bringing your hands together at your heart, bowing the chin into the chest, taking a moment to honor your practice with reverence and gratitude. May you remember that you will always be okay. May you find a white light that guides you and keeps you safe. May you have hope, help, and happiness along the way. Namaste, yogis. Thanks everyone for being here. I hope you are feeling good in your bodies and ready to greet the rest of your day. And I hope you come back again soon. Take care of yourselves.